Hello everyone. The title of this presentation is Role of Tenon Advancement in Treating Limbal Ischemia in Acute Chemical Injury. In acute chemical injury, the damage can range from ocular surface epithelial defects to limbal and scleral ischemia, which may subsequently progress to corneal and scleral melting and perforation and finally result in thysis bulbi. To avoid such complications, tenon advancement has been largely advocated as a limbal revascularization procedure that establishes limbal perfusion and facilitates early surface re-epithelialization. Following are the specific learning objectives that we tend to convey by the end of this presentation. The first is, how do we assess the extent of chemical burns? What is the ideal time to assess the limbal ischemia? How is the tenon advancement performed? And what is the primary aim of medical or surgical intervention in chemical burns? Coming to the first learning objective, how do we assess the extent of chemical injury? There have been multiple recent advancements in the form of ASOCT and geography for assessing the extent of limbal or skeletal damage. However, the chemical injury is largely assessed clinically. There are different classification systems classifying grades of injury. However, the basic preliminary examination includes popular surface staining. Here is an image showing an eye with acute alkali injury with fluorescent dye in cul de sac and the surface epithelial integrity seems intact. However, the same case when painted with fluorescent dye revealed the actual area of surface involvement. So, it's mandatory to paint the ocular surface with fluorescent dye rather than just instilling it in the cul de sac in cases with acute chemical injury. Limbal blanching and conjunctival chemosis can be seen in severe grades of ocular surface burn or even in relatively milder burns because of overlying conjunctival edema. That means limbal blanching does not always correlate to the degree of limbal ischemia and this conjunctival edema resolves with medical management with topical steroids over 1 week to 10 days. However, limbal blanching that does not respond to topical steroids over 1 week to 10 days are likely true limbal ischemia and needs limbal revascularization procedures. Coming to the third learning objective, how is the tenon advancement performed? I would like to take you through a case to understand as to how and where do we do the tenon advancement procedure. Here is a case of a 29 year old male who presented with sudden onset pain watering in the left eye for 6 days. He is an employee at a pharmaceutical company. He suffered an accidental spillage of potassium hydroxide in his left eye. He was treated locally with thorough eye wash and antibiotic steroid eye drops and cycloplegic. His past and family history were non-significant. On systemic examination, he was conscious, coherent to time, place and person and rest of the examinations were well within normal limits. On ocular examination, the visual acuity in the right eye was 6 by 6, however, in the left eye it was 6 by 36. The rest of the examination in the right eye was well within normal limits, however, in the left eye, there was significant lid edema with mechanical ptosis. There were diffuse conjunctival epithelial defects with marbleization of the vessels. There were 270 degrees of limbal blanching with sparing of the supero-temporal 3 clock hours. There was total corneal epithelial defect with diffuse stromal edema and DM folds. Precluding anterior segment examination, iris details, lens examination and fundus examination in the left eye. These are the clinical images of the left eye wherein we can see that there is total corneal epithelial defect with diffuse corneal stromal edema. There is 270 degrees of limbal blanching involving nasal, inferior and temporal limbus. However, the superotemporal limbus from 11.30 to 2.30 o'clock had preserved limbal vascularization. Following painting the left eye ocular surface with fluorescent dye and upon examination under the cobalt glow filter, we can see that there is total corneal epithelial defect. There are conjunctival epithelial defects involving the entire bulbar conjunctiva except the caruncle and the superotemporal region between 11.30 to 2.30 o'clock. We can also see that there are desquamated sheets of epithelium hanging over the cornea. So, a final diagnosis of Dua's grade 5 ocular surface burn of the left eye was made and a plan of left eye tenon advancement with amniotic membrane grafting under explained guarded visual prognosis was made. Here is a video on tenon advancement and amniotic membrane grafting in acute chemical injury. First, conjunctival peritomy is done in the area of suspected limbal ischemia. Limited peritomy should be done and should be stopped once the bleeding point is noted. The devitalized conjunctival tissue is excised to prevent sustained inflammatory cytokine release. 
the tenon should be released from the underlying sclera and also from the overlying conjunctiva in the areas where tenon advancement is planned. This facilitates the advancement of the tenon to the limbus. The advanced tenon is then anchored to the limbus with the help of 8-0 vicral sutures. The same procedure is repeated in the other quadrants also where tenon advancement is planned. Following this, the amniotic membrane graft is placed over the ocular surface. Using fibrin glue, the bare ocular surface is covered with the amniotic membrane. The redundant amniotic membrane is excised. The amniotic membrane is stuck in beneath the conjunctiva all around. A bandage contact lens is placed and a lateral paramedian tarscopy is also performed. Coming to the last learning objective, what is the primary aim of medical or surgical intervention in chemical burns? The best clinical outcome of either medical management or tenons advancement and amniotic membrane grafting is to have a stable and epithelized ocular surface. The corneal clarity is bound to compromise and corneal conjunctivalization is the rule. The conjunctival epithelium growing over the cornea is a desirable outcome and this should be conveyed to the patient during counseling preoperatively. These are the images of the same patient that we discussed previously at the end of 3 months with vascularized limbus and a stable ocular surface. The surface at the end of 6 months also is quite stable and the patient now can be planned for simple limbal epithelial transplantation. So, the take home messages from this presentation is, in a case of chemical injury, one should paint the ocular surface with fluorescent dye to have an idea of the surface involvement rather than just putting or instilling the fluorescent dye into the conjunctival cul-de-sac. The decision making for tenon advancement should ideally be made at 1 week to 10 days and the primary aim of the surgery or the medical management in a case of chemical injury is to promote surface epithelialization. Even a conjunctival epithelial phenotype is a desirable outcome.